Hey guys, it's Melanie from MelanieKham.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, part two of the Learn to Sew series. Today's video, we're gonna be learning how to use a sewing machine. In today's video, you need to have your sewing machine. So I will again provide all the links um, in the description box. And if you watched the last video, I went through a little bit about sewing machines, but I'm not gonna talk today about like what, which ones to buy, all those different things. We are gonna be threading the machine filling the bobbin, talking about the parts of the machine, and that's gonna take up plenty of time. Have your machine ready. If you needed to have it serviced, make sure it's ready to go. Have some thread. I have black out, because I'm gonna be sewing on white fabric so that you guys can see it really well. You need to have a needle. You need to have a bobbin. We'll fill it all up, so don't worry about that. You also need to have your manual, which I'll talk about that in a second, um, but another material is scrap fabric. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. So make sure you have your manual. If you bought the machine recently, hopefully you have it handy. If it, you bought your machine used, go online, Google your machine, put your make and model in there and download your manual. It's often pretty easy to find. I had a vintage machine a long time ago that I bought used and I was able to download the manual online. I'll try to find the link. They had a whole bunch of other ones too, but you need to have your manual because it's gonna help you with all of those features specific to your machine. So it's really key. If you bought your machine at a dealer, they can also help you with that. My machines all came from so many things over in Florida. They're so great customer service wise. I highly recommend them if you are still looking for a sewing machine location to buy. And I'm in California, so I have my machines serviced locally, but they are my people for getting machines. So in this video, we're gonna go over how to thread it, how to fill your bobbin, how to change out your needle, the different parts of the machines, your stitch length, stitch width, what the different buttons are, at least on my machine. And this is gonna be a little bit different for everyone, which is why having your manual is so key, because it's gonna be similar for a lot of machines. And I pulled out my basic machine specifically so that it's gonna apply to most people watching, hopefully. But this will at least get you the gist, even if you have a different style machine than mine. Let's head over to the sewing machine and uh, learn how to use it. The first thing we're gonna go over is how to turn your machine on and kind of what these cords are. So this cord is to the foot pedal. So here is what the foot pedal looks like for this machine and it connects to the machine with this kind of cord right in here. And then this is the power cord. Looks like that. Plug that in and then you plug it into the wall. And then this here is the power switch. So once you turn on that power switch, hopefully the machine turns on <laughs> and then you know, all right, we, we've got the first step done, learning how to turn it on. Okay, so you'll see the light come on and this has a simple computer in here, but um, there are a lot of machines that have knobs. Actually, let me pull out my other machine. Okay, so my this Juki has a simple computer on it, but I wanna show you real quick, I pulled out my Viking. This was the sewing machine I made tons of projects on, and it's got knobs. So if there is something to refer to on this style of machine, I'm not gonna plug this all in, I haven't, pulled this out and used it in a couple of years, it probably needs to be serviced. So um, I'm not gonna mess with it too much, but I will kind of show you in reference uh, how the knobs are. The Viking connector, it's got one connection, which then goes to the pedal and the plug. So you might have the same thing, it's kind of a two for one sort of thing. Uh, whereas the Juki is two separate cords. When the Viking turns on, the light turns on, but there's no computer or any lights that turn on on the rest of the machine. Okay, let's go over some of the parts of the machine. This is the hand wheel. You will always wanna bring the hand wheel toward you because that's how the kind of the timing of the machine works. So you're always gonna bring the wheel toward you and that's gonna make that needle go up and down. You see that, that needle moving. Here, are the buttons are gonna be kind of specific to your machine. So find the diagram in your manual that refers to those things, which we'll talk about those in just a second, but I want to just still go over the buttons. The turtle and the hair on this machine is uh, the speed. So the turtle is slower, the hair is faster. Some machines have this feature and some don't. So your machine might not have it. Here are the stitches that we've got. We've got some additional things here, buttonholes, a couple of, um, Stitches, not a ton, but basic. This here is needle up or needle down position. It's a great feature to have on a sewing machine, a must have for me personally. 
um, but a lot of machines don't have this and that's fine. When instead of pushing, you know, having your needle stop in the down position or in the up position, you can always use your hand wheel to make that adjustment as you're going. This is a lock stitch or auto lock button. Um, again, if you are curious about that, it has some different kind of stipulations on ways that you can use it. It's a different than a back stitch. All right, this uh, kind of U-turn button is the reverse stitch or the back stitch. This is like a start stop button. This is for people who are not able to push on the foot pedal for whatever reason. You can use your hands to start stop. So you cannot have your um, presser, your foot pedal plugged in, you unplug it, and then you can, you can push that button. It'll start slow and then it will go to the speed which your machine is set. and then you stop it. This is um, especially good for people who have limited mobility or some sort of disability or something like that. Sometimes this is a must have. Up here is your bobbin winder. So we're gonna go over that in just a minute. Sometimes there are helpful diagrams on the machine for reminding you about threading or kind of bobbin loading, all of those things. So those, that's what that is. Here's our thread spool back there. I'm gonna turn the machine around. Right here, kind of inside the inside of the machine is the presser foot lifter. I'm sure it has a more uh, legit name than that, but it, up, it lowers and raises your foot. Sometimes it's along the back or kind of in the inside, but that's what that does. All right, most sewing machines allow you to have a free arm where you can take part of the base of the machine off and it creates a thinner area for sewing. This is really nice for sleeves, apparel sewing, where you have like a tight spot to get in here. Also, mine has storage. My Viking does as well. And this comes off here to allow for that free arm. A lot of times sewing machines will come with this sort of little piece here. And this is a basically like a screwdriver. And so this is what you're gonna use in order to take the plate off of the machine and that's how you clean it out. So periodically you want to take this off, use your, use your screw, just like that's why you have it. You want to use this guy to unscrew your screws, right? You'll take that off and then use the brush that it came with to clean out all the lint that will build up inside there. So that is what that is for. All right, now let's fill up a bobbin. So this is where you wanna make sure you find this in your manual, especially the first time you do it for winding the bobbin. Now, like on this machine, it says set the speed control to the fastest position for your bobbin winding. So there are gonna be little hints and things like that specific to your machine that you will need to know in order to wind your bobbin potentially. It's also gonna have diagrams on how to create your tension, which we'll talk about, don't worry, uh, for your bobbin winding to make it the most successful because you want your bobbin wound properly so that it doesn't create problems for you. If the thread isn't wound tight enough around your bobbin, it can create tension issues when you're sending your fabric through the machine. So here is the bobbin that comes with it. There might be metal ones also. I feel like typically with the standard kind of basic model machines, you have the plastic bobbin and this kind of plate, this kind of drop-in bobbin. So the, the once it's filled, the bobbin is gonna go in this way. Some of the semi-industrial machines have a bobbin where you have to come in like un from the side. But I think this is mostly what I've seen for sort of basic machines. The first thing you wanna do is take your thread and place that on the, you know, I don't know the specific names of a lot of these things. Uh, the pin, right? The spool pin. All right, so this, this bar thingy that you put it on, that's kind of what I think of in my brain. Okay, so you want the thread to come over the top of it, not be coming underneath it, because we don't want anything to inhibit the thread from going to the tension disc and then over to the bobbin winder. And so a lot of times you'll have these that go on the top. So I need to have my machine on the bunny. Then I need to bring the thread around the disc and, and over, and you'll, you'll kind of feel it kind of slide in there. On the bobbin, you see these holes. So you'll want to take your thread, put that up in the hole, and place that on the bobbin winder. Thread's coming from the spool over into the tension discs, 
into the bobbin coming up through the top. I'm holding on to my thread up here. It's clicked over into the bobbin position. My thread is nicely snug in between those tension discs and I'm gonna lightly press on my presser foot several times. So see, we wanna wind it up a little ways so that once we trim this thread, it's not gonna come off. And then you can go ahead and press on the presser foot to finish filling up your bobbin. Once it's full, it will automatically stop. So see that? I'm stepping on the pedal, but it's not turning anymore. So now we can click it back over, take it off. All right, so now we're gonna put this in the machine and thread the machine. This is where the bobbin needs to go. There's usually a little button here that lifts up this plate. And this plate has a little diagram on it if you need help figuring out where that thread is supposed to go. So that's a good little reminder. Your bobbin's gonna fit right in there. So when you put it in, I like to think about it as the letter P. So the thread comes down here and we have the letter P. That, that always seems to help me remember how it's supposed to go in. So then you'll place the bobbin inside so just drop down in there really easy. And the thread, there's usually arrows here to help you. The thread's gonna slide inside that metal piece and then come out the top. One more time, a little closer, shaped like a P. Follow that arrow, pull that along and up. Now you'll replace your cover and yeah I leave my thread kind of popping out here and let's thread the machine the top thread part and then we'll see how to make it all come together now before we thread the top of the machine I want to touch on the needles just in case you don't have a needle in your machine just yet you won't be able to thread it without the needle so we got to have a needle in there some needles have the eye is going straight back and some the eye is going to the side the needle has a flat side when we look here we'll see that that flat side is supposed to be toward the back of the machine and so that's important it usually only goes in one way the hole is shaped so that that flat side goes in. So if you try to put it in wrong, it won't go in wrong. So don't worry too much about this, but you wanna make sure the machine is off when you change out your needle. And it has a little screw here. You might need to get your screwdriver out and unscrew the needle and the needle will slide out. Make sure that that needle is nice and tight with the screw. You might even need to crank it with your um, screwdriver to make sure it's nice and secure. Let's grab our thread from up here. And this is very similar with all the machines that I have. There's typically a area over here that you have to catch. And there are diagrams along the machine to help you. So we're gonna need to come along this side first. Put that in there. Then it's gonna come down. This is our disc, like our tension disc. It's gonna kind of go along there. Here's step three gonna come around and up now there should be this metal you're gonna put it inside the take-up lever so it, so we're at step four we came up and then you're gonna bring it around and allow that thread to come inside you see that so now it's inside the lever then we're gonna bring it down and some machines will have needle threaders I'm gonna just show you how to do it without, just in case you don't. Once you're, you've come down here, there's usually a little catch above the needle. So here was the take-up lever part, and then down here, there's a little hook that you wanna wrap your thread around. So my hook is here. That's gonna help the thread go right on top of that needle. Okay, so if your thread ends up over here somewhere, that's not right. It's gonna the way the threading works it, is it's gonna end up so that it's right on top of that needle and the needle can kind of come down right in front of the needle. 
Then what you'll do, you're gonna take your thread and put it from front to back. Probably my big old hand is in the way. All right, so it's in there from front to back. I know it's, it probably didn't see me do it because my hand was in the way. And then you can pull it through. So the thread now is gonna go straight in front of that needle toward the back. So now what you'll do is you'll hold that top thread and take our hand wheel and crank that toward you and it's gonna drop the needle down. Keep going until it comes back up. Now it has caught that bobbin thread so then you'll pull up slightly. You see that loop coming? That's the bobbin. So we'll just pull gently on that bobbin thread and then we'll now have both of our threads ready to go. And then I like to kind of get both of them together and then place it toward the back of the machine. Really quick, let me show you how it works with the needle threader. This is the needle threader. You usually pull it down and it kind of catches into the needle. You'll have it almost ready to go. It'll be around that little catch. But then what you'll do is bring it to the left and go under and the diagrams in your manual will probably be more helpful than this but just in case and then you'll kind of loop it underneath there's like a little hook that's coming through the eye of your needle and then it pulled it through for me all right now um, i'm going to show you real quick how you take the presser foot off uh, different machines are going to do this a little bit differently mine has this back button you push that button and the foot comes out to put it back you just put it in its spot and then i'll just drop my the foot down and then it'll clip into place the viking is very similar but instead of having a release you just pop it out and clips out with your fingers this is kind of the Part of the shank that you can take off free motion feet and some of the different feet require that you take this off if you're going to be used, installing like the buttonhole or a walking foot uh, you might have to take that off which is why it has this knob here and it is removable at any point you hear a strange noise you hear a loud pull something doesn't seem quite right you need to stop your machine and use your hand wheel to slowly use your needle because I don't want you guys to break a needle and have that needle fly toward your face. Always kind of start slow, put that speed over on the turtle if you need to. Use the hand wheel at first, which is totally fine, but I think you guys will be okay. Grab a scrap piece of fabric, and I'm gonna have do two layers because you're always gonna be sending two layers through the machine. So I want you to get a feel for what that's like. Put your fabric in place. Don't worry about lining things up right now. This is just a trial run. You're gonna drop your foot down. So now that's nice and in place. And then just slowly press on that presser foot to get an idea of how quick your sewing machine can go. And don't feel like you need to go quick, you just wanna get a good hang of that stitch. This is the turtle speed. I've got my pedal all the way down and this is how fast it's going. Now, when I stop, my needle goes up. So it stops in the needle up position. If you have a machine that has a needle up, needle down button, you can push that. I always like to stop with my needle down. It kind of secures everything, especially with when you're quilting. Then if you were to keep sewing, it would stop with the needle down. So then you can either hit the needle up button to pull it up or you can use your hand wheel. All right, so let's take this off. I like to pull it to the side and then over here, over here there's usually a thread cutter. So you pull that to the side and cut those threads. And then let's take a look at the stitch. So we got the top stitch, but then always look at the back of that stitch, okay? This is often an indication on your tension. A couple of things with the tension. The first thing that you wanna do is find the diagram in your manual that shows the tension. And this is so helpful. Sometimes I still refer to my diagrams because I get, I get sometimes confused over which tension to fix when I see a problem with my stitch. So this is what I wanna show you. This top needle 
is creating that top thread, the bobbin is creating the bottom thread, and your tension is making sure that those are locked in the middle of the fabric. So if you have a problem with your tension, the diagrams will show you what that might look like. So if your tension is too tight, and it will tell you right here, if your tension is too tight, that means that your top thread is just sort of running along the top of your fabric. So it'll tell you what to do. So it means the tension's too tight, it's at a four, it means you need to move it up to go down to the three. Does that make sense? So here's that knob, and then you can adjust your tension here. And you adjust your tension based on what that stitch is doing. So if your tension is too loose, that means that thread is running along the bottom of your fabric and you need to raise your tension. Now another reason why your stitch might not look good is if you need to change out your needle because that needle is what's piercing through the fabric. And so if the needle dulls, it's not gonna pierce the fabric as effectively to grab that bobbin thread and make a nice pretty stitch. So if you haven't changed the needle out and you're having trouble with your tension, that's always my first recommendation with troubleshooting your stitch. If you did that stitch and your stitch did not look nice, like the diagram, where it's kind of locking in really nicely, it looks the same on the front and the back, the first thing you're gonna do is re-thread it. Pull your bobbin out, pull the top thread out, and re-thread your machine. Chances are you just made a little mistake somewhere and try it again. If that didn't work, change out your needle. Maybe your needle is dull. Maybe your needle has a little burr on it that's kind of a defective needle, something like that. If you are still having a lot of trouble with your stitch, it shouldn't be having this much trouble, but if in the future you're coming across a problem um, as you're working with your machine, I have had defective bobbins before. So there was one time I was sewing and I, my stitch looked terrible and um, I didn't know what was wrong. I tried everything and it turned out that the bobbin, so this guy was warped. So the second I just put a different bobbin in there, with the same thread and everything, it worked beautifully. Just make sure that when you're trying all these things to make sure you get that beautiful stitch, that you only do one at a time. That way, whatever problem it was, you can identify how to fix it the next time. So zero one, that is my stitch style. It's underlined the width now. I don't need to mess with that because it's a straight stitch. If I go over there, I can up it to a three four, five, a, a five or higher is gonna be like a basting stitch. So over here on the knobby machine, this is telling you what your stitch is. So it'll have the diagram up here, what your stitch is. So stitch one is straight stitch, two would be your zigzag. So you would move that depending on what you want your stitch to be. The dial up here, it shows the little zigzag icon. That is how wide your zigzag is gonna be. So sometimes you want a nice wide zigzag, really large, and sometimes you just want a teeny little zigzag. And then this knob down here is your stitch length. So it goes to zero, which would be if you want a free motion. So you don't want a stitch length. Your hands are creating your stitch length. That would be what the zero is for, or your buttonhole is here as well. And then one up to four. Like a 2.5 is typically what I sew on. So last thing I wanna talk about is sort of this plate and how it works. You can see lots of lines and lots of um, you know, measurements on here. Those are gonna be some lines that we want to address once we have certain seam allowances. So different projects call for different seam allowances, whether you're doing apparel or quilting or what have you. So you can, I don't know if you can see in there, but one says 5 eighths and just look at what it is on your machine. One says five eighths, one says half, half inch, and then you're gonna have these measurements down here. That's just gonna help you as you're sending your fabric through the machine. If you need to have a five eighths allowance, you're gonna run that line, the edge of your fabric along a five eighths line or along the half inch line. So that's all that that is for. Hopefully that was review for most of you, but if you have never pulled your sewing machine out of the box, hopefully that just helped you run through it. Again, your manual is your BFF. Put it in a safe spot. It's really gonna show the diagrams specifically based on your machine, which is just so helpful. If you have any questions, leave those down below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.